Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have e to the power 1 over e and square root of 2. And we're going to figure out which number is greater. Awesome. So let's go ahead and write square root of 2 by uh, using the you know idea of rational exponents. Let's go ahead and write the square root of 2 as 2 to the power 1 half. So, in other words, square root of 2 is the positive number whose square equals 2. Great. So, this kind of gives us these two numbers to compare e to the power 1 over e versus 2 to the power 1 over 2, which is kind of nice because they have the same type of structure. So, let's go ahead and define a function. Uh, we're going to be looking at the derivative of this function. And then we're going to make a table, checking the intervals on which it's increasing or decreasing. So we'll do a little bit of calculus. And then we're going to be checking out the graph. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the numerical values. Awesome. Now, uh, let's go ahead and define our function as f of x equals x to the power 1 over x. As you remember, uh, we looked at x to the power x before. And, you know, we use that a lot for comparing two numbers, but this time it's a little different. And at the end, like I said earlier, I'm going to show you the graph of it. So I want to differentiate this function. And I know some folks are going to write this uh, using ln, like e to the power ln something. But I would like to ln both sides first. So let's go ahead and ln both sides. That's going to give me ln f of x equals ln x to the power 1 over x. Now, we can go ahead and move this 1 over x to the front. That's the whole idea. If you have a function whose base and exponents are both variables, then you can't use the standard rules. So you have to turn it into something that you already know. So here we get ln of f of x equals 1 over x times ln x. And obviously, we can write this as ln x over x. X. And this is a function we've seen before, you know, we looked at the behavior of this function, so that should be hopefully familiar. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. So we're going to use the derivatives. When you differentiate the ln function, as you remember, hopefully, uh, the derivative of ln u is u prime divided by u. So this is going to be when differentiated f prime of x divided by f of x. And now on the right hand side, we can use the quotient rule here and the derivative of ln x multiplied by x minus the derivative of x, which is 1 multiplied by, multiplied by ln x. And all of that is going to be divided by the quotient, I mean the denominator squared. Great. Uh, we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit by crossing out the x's. So this gives us f prime of x over f of x equals 1 minus ln x over x squared. And obviously, I can multiply both sides by f of x. Consider the fact that x, uh, f of x can never be 0. It, it is OK to do. And when we do, f prime of x gives us f of x multiplied by 1 minus ln x over x squared. And let's go ahead and replace f of x with x to the power 1 over x now. And this is going to give us the derivative of this function. I know I've taken uh, too long to evaluate the derivative, but I think if you're new to calculus especially, uh, this would be helpful, hopefully. Now, this is the derivative of x to the power 1 over x, and notice that it contains the original function. Great. So, you know, with derivatives, if you're looking at the behavior of a function like a maxima or minima, uh, we take the first derivative and set it equal to 0. So from here, we are hoping to find critical values on which, you know, we have a horizontal tangent line or um, it's kind of like the, where the concavity changes, which is uh, in an inflection point or point of inflection. Yep. So here, um, x to the power 1 over x can never be 0 because if the base is 0, then you're going to get something like 1 over 0, which is kind of, you know, uh, undefined. So it's never going to be 0. And when I show you the graph, well, it's not, you're not really going to see it because Desmos doesn't really show, a, you know, uh, what's that called? An empty uh, dot. Anyways, so we're just going to set this equal to 0, and that's going to give us 1 minus ln x equals 0, which means ln x equals 1. And from here, we get x equals e. Now, this value is 
extremely important because this is where the function is going to have some changes. And we're going to look at them by using a table. I know some folks like the second derivative test, but I like the table more. But I definitely uh, support your decision if you are that type. Anyways, let's go ahead and make a table. And our table is going to have the following rows. Uh, this is going to be x, this is going to be f prime, and this is going to be f. And my goal is to find out uh, the intervals on which our function is increasing and decreasing. Since e is the critical value, uh, it uh, sets the derivative equal to 0. Now I want to check to the right and to the left of e. Uh, I want to find the sign of the derivative. Now notice that uh, this is uh, x to the power of 1 over x is always going to be positive. 1 minus ln x and x squared is also positive uh, for non-zero values. So the only thing that matters is 1, uh, 1 minus ln x. So 1 minus ln x is what we need to look at. And from here, you can safely say that if x is greater than 1, then 1 minus ln x is going to be negative because ln x is going to be greater than 1. So to the right of, uh, I should probably say e, not 1. Uh, all right. So great. So if x is greater than e, uh, ln e is going to be um, if x is greater than e, ln e is going to be greater than 1, so the difference will be negative. So we're, we have a negative sign here, and we have a positive sign here. Great. Now, this means that our function is going to be increasing and then decreasing, which makes a maximum at uh, x equals e. So increasing first and then decreasing. All right, great. So now uh, we can kind of use this information to look at the graph, but let's go ahead and uh, evaluate or kind of write down what it means. f is increasing on negative infinity to e. And so our function is increasing for x values that are less than e. And 2 is less than e. So that means uh, f of e is going to be greater than f of 2. And when I show you the graph, this is going to make much more sense. But since f of e, and remember our function f of x is x to the power 1 over x, f of e is going to be e to the power 1 over e, and it's going to be greater than 2 to the power 1 half. Or you can write it as square root of 2. Wow, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and check out the graph now, and you'll get a better picture. Picture? Uh, well, pun intended, I guess. Uh, so here, uh, here's the graph of y equals x to the power 1 over x. And here, you can see that our function is increasing for x values that are less than, uh, less than e, I should say equal. So it means that the y value at 2 is going to be lower than the y value at e. Uh, so we're looking for the larger value, and that is going to be uh, e to the power 1 over e in this case. Now let's go ahead and look at the numerical values, and we're going to finish with that. So e to the power 1 over e happens to be this, and square root of 2, as you probably uh, know already, at least a couple digits. And they're pretty close, well, not bad, but e to the power 1 over e wins the battle. Now, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. That'll be the crazy idea. I hope the hype that I made meets your expectations. Until tomorrow, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.